If Affinity uh, keep their core products free and they add things like video and UX design, um, it's gonna mean people like 20 year old me is not gonna be standing in some sweaty mall in Bali trying to get hooked up with design software. I do, I think this is like a moment in design. Uh, sometimes these things are like, you know, like clickbait um, for YouTube thumbnails, but this one feels like this could actually replace uh, Adobe. I think the tools are there. Um, it's mainly about distribution, I think, these days. And uh, what I really think about is 20 year old version of me. Um, what would I have done in my 20s straight out of design school, no money, no access to the free university versions of Creative Cloud. Um, I kind of like, I'll tell you, my first version of uh, Adobe Creative Suite was bought from a very official looking uh, stall in a Bali mall. <laughs> uh, and you know, they had all these DVDs lined up, you could pick what you wanted. I haggled, paid my money, and the guy said, come back in 20 minutes. And I mildly freaked out, not sure what's going on. Came back 20 minutes later, and he handed me a uh, still hot, I remember that, it was still hot DVD uh, of Creative Cloud. Um, burnt, yeah, in the back shed somewhere. Now, I don't wanna advocate piracy. I hate it when my courses get stolen and stuck up on places. Um, but I can also sympathize, like uh, being creative and broke sucks. Yeah, so that was my reality back then. Um, I was creative, hungry, didn't have the funds, so just made it happen. I think like if I was back then and Affinity was available, I, uh, I could easily be Dan the Affinity guy. I think accessibility really matters when it comes to at least getting started with these tools. Yeah, but now I'm all grown up. Uh, I have lost my sweet fringe, <laughs> that's gone, but I have got like a ton of design experience. So like, what do I do now? Would I switch? That is the big question. So what's changed now? Uh, well, Canva, you probably heard of, uh, bought Affinity for like 380 million US dollars. It's about 8 million sheep. <laughs> it's about a third of all of our sheep. Uh, it's a lot of sheep. Then in October just gone, they went and took their three products, right? So they've got Affinity has Affinity Photo, Designer and Publish. Um, they went in October and released it smushed all together in one like unified bit of software. They call it Affinity Studio, which is useful, but not that big a deal. The big deal though is they made it free. So what the tools do. Uh, so Affinity Photo is a replacement for an alternative for Photoshop, uh, designer for Illustrator and uh, Publish is a competitor to InDesign. They do the same job. Now. I've used them loads. Uh, you know, I love dabbling with new software and the total, you know, totally capable bits of software. Um, but it did feel like I, I was a big boy designer and I don't use these tools. Uh, but with the recent changes, I do feel like, I don't know, I'm not so sure anymore. As a professional, would I switch? Uh, so kind of three parts, right? Photo and the Photoshop alternative, Masking, blending, composites, retouching, that is a big yes. For designer, which replaces Illustrator, it's the one I'm probably the most uh, emotionally attached to. So, uh, you know, logos, icons, illustrations, it's like a reluctant tick. Can we have a reluctant tick? And publisher, uh, that is the most probably, the one I'm most unsure about. Um, so if it, it's perfect, if you're the person who has like, if you don't have never used a grip style or a nested style or a data merge, then publisher is a big tick for you. Where it gets murky is when you're dealing with really super large documents, books, magazines. That's where it's not really a tick. It's 90% there, but it's kind of like an unsure tick again. It's more like a, uh, it's more like that tick that, I don't know, you maybe don't know, like the tick that's at a weird angle. It's like, it's there, but it does, does something a little bit weird about it. It's not quite right. I don't know, other designers will know the tick. Do you know the tick? <laughs> that one. Ugh. Ticks should be like this. But this tick is just like, I don't know. We spend too long talking about ticks. <laughs> Move on. 
So for a pure graphic designer, yeah, 100% you could use Affinity. Um, I'm using it um, and you know, I'm not the best designer, but like I have been totally unhindered by the software. Uh, the big problem though is kind of like my next question is like what happens when you want to do UX design, motion graphics, or maybe video work? That is where Affinity has a big old X. <laughs> For Adobe, uh, I pay I pay 900 US dollars a year for um, the Creative Cloud license. Um, but the big thing though is that, like as a designer, I am just as excited by making you know working in UX and motion graphics and video. So I need some of these other tools, and that's what kind of it's the comfort blanket of Creative Cloud. It's the stuff you use plus all these other things you kind of like would love to get into, and it's fun knowing that they're there. Um, like a big cuddle. Uh, so things like After Effects and Premiere Pro and uh, InCopy and uh, what Acrobat Pro, uh, Character Animator Animates, uh, Adobe Express, Dreamweaver. Oh, rest in peace, Dreamweaver. <laughs> um, so all of these other tools, actually what I've just realized is I'm just paying for both at the moment. I can't see, <laughs> I can't see a way I won't be paying for both. So instead of going cheaper, which probably people watching this wanna be trying to figure out whether they can go the cheaper option. I've just ended up paying for both. Damn it. <laughs> hmm. So I'll make a course on it. Uh, for me, uh, I've been thinking about Affinity for a long time. It's a great alternative for Adobe. Uh, for me to make a course, it's a good proxy for like what tools are, you know, uh, big in the industry because I need to do a couple of things. Like it's four months of my life to make a course and a lot of work uh, for me and the team. So uh, I need the product to be good. I need people to be using it. And when those two are right, um, it's potential for a course. Uh, but the difference here is that uh, because Canva have made Affinity free, it's going to open the floodgates for people getting into it. And for me, those are the people that I like to help the most. Uh, you know, my courses aren't really for people polishing their design skills to get the last 10%. I want to give you your first 50%, get you in the industry, figure out the tools, give you kind of some structure to work from as a designer. So yeah, I am busy making an outline at the moment because I feel the time is right for this software. My predictions, uh, I got a couple. Uh, the first one is that Affinity slash Canva will buy DaVinci. Uh, they need a video editing tool. Their one in Canva is not very good. Uh, DaVinci and Canva are both Australian companies, so maybe. The next one is a UX tool. Uh, neither Adobe or Affinity have a UX design tool. They've, they've both got basic stuff, but uh, the only game in town at the moment is Figma. And Adobe did try to buy them, but they were blocked. And now that Figma is a public company, I don't think either of them can get in there or maybe afford it. Um, so Figma's the only game in town, so they're both gonna have to either build one or I don't even know a really good alternative to Figma. So maybe bring back XD. <laughs> The next one uh, is Adobe's gonna have to figure out a new pricing model. Um, they're gonna need some sort of onboarding mechanism for the new generation of designers. Uh, you know, old school designers, am I old school now? Okay, well, legacy designers like me, okay, are, we're stuck in our ways, we know the tools, and we're prepared to pay. Also, there is switching costs with old files and skills, so that's kind of safe, but where it comes to people getting into design, like Canva is scooping up a whole bunch of people getting into the game on the fringes, just getting started. Um, they need to have a product in there that does the same. They've got some stuff with Express and some light versions of the software. I'm sure that's what they think is the way that's gonna work, but they're gonna have to figure out something, but they're smart. They went from like, remember, I don't know if you remember, but uh, there was lump sum payment for a pack of DVDs, and then they went to Creative Cloud. Um, which was a huge big uproar in the industry. I'm not paying for subscriptions, but it was amazing. They, they moved with the times, it was amazing for their business and it worked. Will they change it now to this more freemium model? I don't know where they'll go, but they need to figure out something. So yeah, if uh, Affinity keep their core products free and they add things like video and UX design, um, 
It's gonna mean people like 20 year old me is not gonna be standing in some sweaty mall in Bali trying to get hooked up with design software. Uh, it's gonna start in schools and in homes and people getting started in design and it's gonna slowly permeate the industry. But if you're an existing Adobe user, uh, switching's hard, right? There are your files, your workflows, your muscle memory. Uh, there's a lot of gravity there. So does Affinity mean a post Adobe design world? I think Adobe's moat that was once very wide and very deep, I think you could probably jump over it now.